Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. For all uh, wrestling fans all around the world, uh, the last week or so has definitely been very, very difficult. Uh, We have experienced uh, two different deaths, um, two different uh, professional wrestlers. Um, First one that I'm going to bring up right now um, is Shad, Shad Gaspard, one half of Crime Time. Uh, Dan and Kamish, uh, I want to get your guys' perspective and opinion on what happened. Details came out that apparently Shad um, and his uh, son were out on the beach. From what I understand, he got caught in a riptide and rescuers came trying to rescue the both of them. Shad in a heroic uh, statement said, save my son. Um, By the time they saved his son, I think Shad was too deep into the riptide and uh, he wound up uh, not making it. I believe it was the next day where they said that his body was found at shore and that's where he was declared dead after um, the police had put out a, an, an investigation for a missing person, that being Shad. Then they called it off once they found the body. What do you guys make of that? What's your guys' perspective on what I, I believe it was a I believe it was a two-day thing where it happened Sunday during the day. They called it off that night. They started again on Monday, called it off, and I think he was found Tuesday, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, otherwise, pretty much everything you said lines up with what I'd heard. Um, a lot of people were holding out hope, but, I mean, after like after 24 hours it, in a situation like that, unfortunately, there's, there's not really that much of... Uh, not, not really that much of a chance of a positive uh, conclusion. Yeah. Um, I was checking every every couple hours to see if there was an update to see if he found some driftwood out somewhere and somebody saw saw him out in the ocean and then they got him help and he got back and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I saw the, the post about the body and I went, oh, shit. Um, so, I mean, my thoughts go out to his family, his son, his wife, um, cause that, that, it, awful. Yeah. Commission? It's not the easiest thing to really, like, talk about just because it's like, so the way I kind of want to, this out. Like, I, I, one, it's it's a tragic situation. It's it sucks and it hurts. Like, but it, at the same time, like, I guess in, in perspective, you know, it's a good thing that you know he wanted to still save the life in regards to his son. And he's commended as a hero, but as a fallen hero at the same time. And it's just, it, it's, it's kind of hard to really, at least for me, it's hard to talk about because it, it just sucks so bad because it's, it's like we're already in this world dealing currently with a lot of things in regards to like, you know, this pandemic uh, restrictions and how we're trying to reaccommodate back into life and, you know, when certain things get lifted and then all of a sudden you hear these stories come out and these things happen and it's just like, you don't know like, how to feel or how to react or how you want to react. Like one night I read about that he went missing and I just kept praying like, you know, please, please, somebody find him, please get to him before it gets worse. And then when you hear the report that they found the body, is the same why, you know, like, but at the same time, I mean, I mean, God bless him for, for doing what he, he could in regards to saving another life, you know, but it's still, 
it's just hard. I'm and, 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 and it, the what? Not that it's the a direct cause or anything, but what makes it what makes it even the worst is like from a from a spec, spectator standpoint is the fact that I think they I think it said that that was the first day Venice Beach was open again. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, for for them to go down there the day it opened and for that to for that to happen um it, it's an unfortunate uh coincidence and uh, I can't help but think that to some degree um the initial response to it is god if only we'd waited <laughs> maybe this wouldn't have happened but uh again uh God bless his family. Uh, I hope that they're doing as well as they can be, given the circumstances. Um, and all the accounts I've seen online, obviously, I've never, I, I had never met the guy, but everybody was praising him, saying he was a great guy in person. And uh, so it, it's definitely a loss for not just the wrestling world, but uh, all of the people he's touched over the years. The one thing that stuck out to me is all the kind words that everybody was saying after he was gone. Because, I mean, Shad Gaspard is not exactly the longest tenured superstar in the wrestling business, that's for sure. Um, yeah. But it seems like in such a short amount of time, just a few years actually, everybody sort of got to know him, and everybody from Batista to Lillian Garcia to John Morrison... Shelton Benjamin, yeah, everybody, whether they were big time players or whatever, um, everybody had something good to say about him, and I think that just shows you and that tells you what kind of a person he was. So I, I think, yeah, that's that's very appropriate. It wasn't just a loss for the wrestling world; it was also a big loss for humanity because uh, any time when someone has that. Um, where everybody could say so many positive things about, you know, about them. I think it's a testament, and it's gonna it's gonna be very difficult for the family, especially for his son. It, yeah, it's 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 a very tough deal. Um, yeah, it's just it's 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 overwhelming now. Just sort of going through all the facts and sort of looking at everything. So, with that, on behalf of AWP, um, we would like to send our condolences and our thoughts and prayers to Shad Gaspard's family uh, through this very tough time. With the pandemic, it's difficult, and then with uh, a family death, it's, it's even more difficult. So, we pray for them at this time. We send them the best thoughts that we possibly can, and God bless. Unfortunately, though, uh, like I said, if you're a wrestling fan, the, the bad news, unfortunately, doesn't, doesn't stop there. I just want to warn everyone that if you are sensitive to the subject of suicide or cyberbullying uh, or anything of that nature, um, I suggest that you click away from the page uh, since we're going to be discussing that today. That's going to be the consensus and the theme of today's episode. Just yesterday, I believe... Hana Kimura, um, I personally um, am not very well acquainted with her work or her as a person, but um, reports broke out today that she had passed away at the age of 22. Immediately, all this ruckus kind of uh, came out online, and apparently her last few tweets um, were insinuating that she had been hurt mentally, that... She was basically called a lot of things over social media, and she was essentially a, a broken person. And what was so gut-wrenching was she wrote, I'm proud to have had a mother who brought me into this world, but now it's time for me to no longer be human. Or I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it was some, some, something along the lines of that. Right now, there is no confirmed uh, cause of death, but one would only assume that it may be a suicide. It's very, very tragic, but before we uh, break down our each respective uh, opinions about this whole thing, 
uh, whoever's got the notes in front of them, if you can uh, briefly give us an introductory uh, paragraph of who she was in the in the wrestling business. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna make it easy. We're gonna go off the uh, the Wikipedia page. Uh, uh, Hana Kimura, uh, born September third, nineteen ninety seven, uh, to May twenty third, twenty twenty. A uh, Japanese female professional wrestler wrestled for the women's wrestling promotion World Wonder Ring Stardom. She was a second generation wrestler, uh, being the daughter of Kyoko Kimura. She trained at Wrestle One's Professional Wrestling Academy, and yeah, there was an influx of uh, rude messages directed at her over the last while. And like you said, it seems that. It ended with uh, her taking her own life. I'll begin by sort of giving my perspective, and I'll and I'll throw it over to you guys. It's it's amazing how sometimes you could not know somebody personally or professionally, and their death can have an effect on you. It had so much of an effect that this is the absolute truth because it just happened this morning. I actually wrote to you guys in a group chat. And um, for those of you who have been followers from the beginning, uh, AWP used to be a very sort of different podcast. Um, We would still discuss wrestling uh, knowledge and logistics, but our execution of it wasn't the best in the world. And somewhere along the line, I thought that we we needed to change something in the podcast, that we had to... Uh, talk about our feelings in a much more uh, professional way because there comes to a point where when you if you if you have a disdain for someone or you don't uh, approve of how they choose to live their professional life or even personal life for that matter uh, we sort of had a habit of uh, saying some derogatory things in the past Um, thankfully for dozens of episodes now, we've uh, sort of cleaned up the language and we've cleaned up our act and we uh, we let one slip here and there, but it's nothing in regards to calling somebody a so-and-so or uh, saying something that could uh, be mean and come off as offensive. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is that I wrote to the both of you in a group text and I said, I'm very happy that we made that adjustment because... There have been some people uh, that we have said derogatory things about in the past. At the end of the day, and I think, Dan, you made this comment and you said, we don't have to agree with what this athlete does, uh, personally, professionally, business-wise, whatever. Uh, We're allowed to disagree. We're allowed to state an opinion. We don't realize it, but these athletes, these superstars who are bigger than life, larger than life, at the end of the day, they're human, and yeah. we, and and we've we've come to see that, especially like someone uh, much like the Undertaker, who for years was very protective and uh, kept the aura around his character. You sort of look at the last drive documentaries, and you see, my goodness, look at this guy critiquing himself, being hard on himself. He's being human, and that falls uh, for every that 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 counts for every wrestler. It's really a shame. I always try to be an advocate of asking for help and reaching out. And, and if you're going through dark times, that there is a way out, that there is a way to, to fix things and not just live in that negativity. But it's, it's, it's shameful that dozens and dozens of people over social media had to jump on behind the keyboard and insinuate such things or, or say such things. And all, all, and all I can say is this. Much respect to her. I think uh, one thing that I was able to take away from this was just treating everyone humanly. Sometimes we lose our patience with people, and that's okay. It happens. But um, at the end of the day, uh, I always have lived with the philosophy of treat others the way that you would want to be treated. It's just it's a shame that people took the initiative to do that, not realizing that someone literally took their lives because of it. I wanted to jump in a little bit based on the first part of what you were saying is when, when we started, I think the, the mentality, like we were kind of riding the, the hype um, the, and, and the excitement because we were like, this will be fun. This is something that we love talking about and we want to be sort of char- character and, and 
gimmicky because, I mean, we've all got nicknames. So we kind of wanted to find a character and fit into it and, and li- live the, the industry that we love. And it took us a while to, like you said, kind of shift gears because you, you can get caught up in the emotion of the whole thing. It's still real to me, damn it. And um, I don't think, that, I mean, what I will say is I don't I don't remember if we ever crossed that specific line uh, per se, but it's not like we ended the episode and then we went online and we threw death threats at anybody. Um, sure, did we go on long rants full of vitriol uh, once in a while? Yeah. But that's why we made that adjustment is because we came to the conclusion that we were overdoing it a little bit. We were good. We were taking our creative liberties a little too far. <laughs> and we needed to remember that, again, these people, while we're critiquing them, while we are looking at them and saying, you need to be better, this booking's not good, we still need to treat them with respect. And in that same group message from earlier today, I brought up the thing with Jim Cornette. Because of the recent comments he made about Becky. Completely out of line. Completely unnecessary. And it's the constant flow of that coupled with the people who jump over that that boundary. Because some people take this, take this shit so seriously <laughs> um, that they can't maintain that barrier. They don't acknowledge that these are people. They they get caught up in the fact that they're uh, superheroes, but they're not. And then you see, uh, like we, you remember the die Rocky die chance? Yeah. Uh, it, I know it's been a long-standing thing ever since since the rollout of social media, which I think I talked about, and. There's always people threatening these people, uh, telling them, I wish you didn't exist. You didn't fucking deserve to win. Da, 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 going off. And it's not fair to these people because they don't pick the winner and they're just doing their job. Speaking from, a, from the, the perspective of, some, of somebody who works in a, in a retail environment, I've gotten face-to-face interactions with people before who are mad at me for things I did not make up. (laughs) Yeah. And I go, I'm just here to do my job, man. Like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you cutting me down? I recently had somebody assert that I was racist because, because the system wouldn't let me do something. Yeah. And I know that, that these aren't, these examples aren't the same as death threats, but it's the same concept. Yeah. Don't lash out at these people for nothing. If you don't like a person, don't condemn them to death. Don't insult them. It's not cool. And it causes, it causes a lot of mental strain, especially for somebody who's predisposed to it or who's already dancing that line. And I refer to it lightly as the straw but we would never want to be the straw that broke broke the camel's back. Yeah. And, and I I I hope that people use this as a learning tool to know that people are people and to treat them with such disregard is inhumane and inappropriate. Yes. So, I, I've been really quiet all day about this because um, it's not something easy to talk about. And in the beginning of this of this show, the very few episodes we first started with, uh, there was always a segment where I it was I kept it quote unquote real, or I spoke out from the heart with a vocabulary 
and a and an aggression behind it. And I'm gonna step out of the quote unquote character and persona that I've kind of given a reputation of and just to to speak as 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 me as Jaime for a second. Um this is hard. Okay. It's it's one thing to be honest about something, but it's another when you're being so aggressive with your anger and and your tone and how you come off to someone because honestly whether someone types it to you texts it to you uh you read it on twitter social media or any form of way you hear it words are the most powerful thing in the world and we disregard it as all oh, they can't affect they can't hurt me but the reality is they cause so much damage that you have no control over sometimes that it's just like it hurts it it it, it it's almost like you can't really like absorb it in so easy regardless of how like strong of a character you have as far as like you know your persona and bravery or just in general how you can perceive things because honestly i'm sure back in the day like the rock like as as Dwayne Johnson as much of a bigger than life persona that he is i'm sure deep down inside hearing the word die rocky die <laughs> affected him almost could have done something to him. just like how a lot of people in this world receive so many like death threats or, or just bullying or just anything coming their way like it, the, the idea that we have about people like in whether it's entertainment wrestling professional sports is oh they're bigger than life there's no way that those words can affect them at all because of who they are. But the reality is they're normal everyday people just like us. And when you say something that you may just be going off at first like letting it out, verbalizing it and it's like okay, they're never going to hear this or they're never going to be aware of it but the reality is whether i've said it or dan said it or shot said it or jim Cornette has said it or this fan from kentucky said it or this person from japan said it it i don't care how far or what the distance is we have such an easy access to the internet to say these things now and we don't realize sometimes how effective these words are and yes we should all take into accountability that we've crossed the line ourselves whether it's behind the keyboard or face to face person reactions it's not the easiest thing to deal with at all I mean each of us has had someone we care about or someone that means something to us or someone we don't even know at all say some hurtful things and it's hard to really absorb it because the reality is we're all vulnerable we're all human and I would like to think as much as we've changed the way the programming is the way we 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 discuss these things that one to everyone who listens to this show if there's ever been something we've said first of all I'll say it. 
on the behalf of the show, we're sorry. We apologize if it, if it came off hurtful, if it came off bad. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I come from the perspective of someone who... <laughs> the perception is, oh, he's a big guy. He, 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 he can take care of himself. I'm sure nothing affects him when the reality is I've had people constantly in my whole life just bully me it's harmful it's hurtful and we can be better we can all be better i'm not saying we're gonna be perfect one day but we can try like this girl didn't deserve it all these performers never deserve it but it just sucks and it's been really hard to just think about or talk about today. And I'm sorry. Well, and this is a 22 year old girl, which shows that anyone is susceptible. And these people, uh, celebrities, professional wrestlers, they're all they're all in the public eye. So they're they're they're, they're oh, what's the word? They are uh, subjecting themselves to unlimited critiques and unlimited unlimited abuse which again they don't deserve i i know people like brie larson and oscar winning actress has gotten a lot of hate for things and it, it's it's not fair <laughs> um it's not fair I, oh you're right and i and i understand like when like when we were doing the the commission keeps it real segments your initial thought when you're going through a segment like that is, oh, it's all in good fun. You're not going out there with the intention of causing this pain or this harm to another person, but you don't know. You mentioned, oh, they'll never hear it, but what if they do? <laughs> um, and that's that's where, where you then have to hold yourself accountable. That's where others need to hold you accountable, which is why also... If you're a listener, if you're a regular listener, if you're a first-time listener and you hear something on the program that rubs you the wrong way, feel free to let us know. Call us out in real time so that we know where we're crossing crossing lines. Um, obviously, don't be aggressive. <laughs> don't be mean. Because it's unnecessary, and that's the whole point of this video. Um, but to keep on focus, she like we we individually don't have much exposure to her. Other people do. Other people are the ones who've been causing these problems. Think before you say anything. Because even if you're heated, in the moment, passion-driven, think, if somebody said this to me, how would I feel? Especially because even if you're like a mentally sound, mentally healthy person, not everybody is. And these individual assaults, may not be individual. <laughs> it might be an entire swarm of, of hate and aggression and, and rude, mean, degrading uh, comments. And that can pile up on somebody's psyche. And if it doesn't stop, if it doesn't end, if it's a constant thing, and you're a young up-and-comer with your entire life ahead of you, and you already think that everybody hates you and God forbid again that you aren't mentally well that might just that just might be enough I know a little bit ago I said one of my philosophies in life is treat others the way that you would want to be treated I also very highly believe that it's not what you say it's how you say it like, I mean, I'll, I'll bring up an example. Roman Reigns. 
before the leukemia hit, before all of that, I know that I, I won't speak on anybody else's behalf, but I'll speak on my own when I say that I didn't approve of the push that Roman was getting. I'm not talking about Joe. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the character. But never, ever, ever did I ever think to myself, you know, I hope that something happens to this guy. And I think that quite ironically, when Joe came out and said, I've been living with leukemia, I think it, it, it's just in a, in a drop of a dime, it changed everybody's perspective. To the point where I remember one time there was a question on the podcast where it said, um, if Roman came back, in what capacity do you want to see him in? And I remember my answer was, I just want to see Roman healthy. And like when he comes back, I don't care what he's doing as long as the guy is healthy. And again, let's not forget that this is a guy who gets booed and jeered. And I don't know if Roman is getting death threats or if people are wishing death upon the guy. But what I'm trying to get at is that there is a way of expressing your opinion without being so extreme about it. And talking about people who um, can relate. Someone whom we do know a lot about, um, Asuka, was one of the few people who tweeted out um, and said... I also am a victim of bullying. I don't know if it was cyberbullying or just bullying, but she said I was a victim and it hurts and it sucks and it's hard. No one, no one, especially if you're a parent, you shouldn't have to witness your son, your daughter take their own life just because... People in the internet world don't approve or say derogatory things. In my opinion, it's like, guys, if we do have the internet, why can't we use it in a positive way? For example, give divas a chance. I think that's a great way to use the internet to voice your opinion. I think about people like Lillian Garcia, who have a podcast dedicated to this type of stuff. And you have professional wrestlers who put their guard down and say, yeah, I've I've been bullied or I've gone through domestic abuse or whatever the deal is. It just sucks. Like, again, I, I, I don't know, um, What's her name? Kimora. I, 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 don't, I don't know much or if anything about her. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what her finishing move is. That's how out of touch I am with her character and her work. But um, I will say that her name is definitely going to stick with me just because of the subject matter at hand. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a very tough deal, and it's a very disturbing thing, um, and it's just, I don't understand how you can encourage somebody to, to take their own life, or to convince them that their existence is not necessary, that's, it's just, it's wrong, um. I think one of the major takeaways here is that people are human and the term humane inherently means treating people as human, not treating them as a poster on your wall or an imaginary figure that is just there for your sick, twisted pleasure. Um, Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. And you should look out for those people, whether you know them or not. If you're a fan of somebody, like, I mean, this is a silly thing to suggest, but if you're a fan of somebody, or even if you don't know, um, not to say it's going to fix everything, 
if you start, if you're scrolling through comments and you see people just hacking at these people, throw a, throw a comment in there just praising them. You don't even need to know their work. Just say, hey, big fan, great job. Because that could brighten their day if they see it. Little things can be saving graces. Yeah. But but look out for each other. Look out for people. You don't know if they are going through the same things as Hana. You don't know if they're putting up with the same abuses as Roman Reigns, as The Rock, as Brie Larson, as Oska. So treat them as people, not as punching bags. One thing that I will say, talking about saving grace, personally in my life, there are people whom I communicate with and I'm very close friends with, much like you guys. You guys can even attest to this. Almost all the time when I wrap up a conversation, uh, whether that's over the phone, over text, over email, or per in person, whatever it might be, one of my closing remarks is, hey, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. And a lot of times I think to myself and I say, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just, I'm talking to the other person. I'm not, I'm not alleviating their problems. But I've had people tell me that, no, um, when, when the, the fact that you took the time to talk to me, to understand me, um, sometimes even people tell me, hey, you said this one thing and it stuck with me and it, and it, and it helped me throughout a, a dark stint. I don't get why we can't spend more time helping each other out. Lending a shoulder for someone to cry on. Doing that instead of bringing each other down. It's, it's not that hard to type, like you said, Dan, to type a few words and say, hey, you're doing a hell of a job. Keep up the good work. Uh, hashtag still watching or, or whatever. You never know because maybe that person just got done reading a derogatory comment and they read that and they go, oh, okay. So it's not all that bad. I even myself, myself, I've seen it. I've seen it with people like Nia Jax. Um, people even go, and this is so sick to even try to visualize, but people go as far as to Photoshop to take like a, a render of the superstar and to alter the, the shape of their body and blow them up and uh, write some derogatory term in the background. The fact that you take the time to do that, and not only do that, but to post it on social media so that it, so that it eventually becomes a chain reaction where it, it reaches that superstar or that athlete or that, that celebrity. And a lot of times, yeah, you get the casual tweet from that performer saying, haters gonna hate or, or whatever. And you would like to think that they are just there, they're letting it blow away and not really affect them. But how do you know? How do you know that that counter tweet is just a defense mechanism? I'm even going to say it. Uh, sometimes we, especially in the beginning, uh, we had our little pun joke about being on the same page. And seeing what Paige went through, especially after the whole Triple H remark, I'm not going to lie when I say I felt guilty. And I sometimes think to myself, thank, thank goodness, thank goodness Paige didn't pull the trigger. Um, no, now, no matter if it was a bad decision that she made and she shouldn't have been taping it and whatever, doesn't give everybody the right to make fun of it and point a finger and spam her social media account. We've all made bad choices. We've all done things that we like to forget. It wouldn't be fair if someone kept on pointing it out to us. Like, yeah, you're doing good now, but remember how you screwed up back in the day? Nobody, nobody needs that. Nobody desires that. Nobody needs to have that in their life. I personally sometimes even take on the role of, of being a, a, a support system for, for a lot of my friends and family. In moments when I feel like they put themselves down, I say, 
I, I, I sympathize and I say, I get it. Sometimes your demons get the better of you. But there is light. In darkness, there is light. It's just the case of finding it, seeing it, embracing it, understanding it. Yeah, it's... It's difficult, and I think, and I don't know how much of an attempt um, she made to get help, or if she tried to get help, or if that was ever a thought that had crossed her mind that maybe I should get help. But um, it's it's just it's sad to see, and I hope that if anybody currently, whether you're a listener, whether if you happen to be a WWE superstar, and you're and somehow you're listening to this episode. There is help out there. There is someone for everyone out there, I believe. It's just the case of reaching out um, and not taking a, a defeated moment and saying that this is, this is the rest of my life. This is how I'm going to feel. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I myself personally, after this situation, I have taken it upon myself to make sure that I treat everyone uh, humanly, to just treat them for who they are and what they are, humans, man, women, children, boy, girl, woman, man, whatever it might be. Yeah, and I, I think we can all take something away from this, that next time before you say something, um, really think about what you're telling the other person. If you're in a bad mood or, or, or someone rubs you the wrong way, instead of at that moment lashing out, give yourself a moment to, to calm down and to reassess how you could better communicate with that person because we truly don't know. If you say something very bad to someone, like you said, Dan, that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. By the same token... If you wind up being there for someone and maybe saying something encouraging, that can also be a saving grace. That's just what I think. My, my final thought on the on the matter on the matter is uh, that for every fan fan that wants to reach out and be that guy that cuts somebody down, whether it's an actor, a wrestler, an athlete, uh, a, a YouTuber, for every person who, who feels the need to try and cut somebody down, there's probably a thousand people who care and who would never want something bad to happen to that person. And so that's where taking five seconds to say something nice could be the difference. Because if you have the vocal majority, or sorry, the vocal minority being abusive, and all the fans go, well, they've got to know that, we, that we're that we here. They've got to know that we like them, but aren't doing anything to, counter, to counterbalance the negativity. You don't know what effect it's having. So take those five seconds, say something nice, let Paige, let Roman, let Oscar know how much of a fan you are, that you appreciate their work, and, and do it as frequently as you can, because the world could always use more positivity, could always use more affection, uh, because what, what, <laughs> what's the alternative? <laughs> Earlier today, like, I was on Twitter, and I saw something from this one follower. He was a big fan of Bray Wyatt, so I, 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 was, I assume he works in the WWE, for all I know. His name's Jimmy, or Jamie Ivey. 
And he tweeted, I entered a world that didn't want me. I sat alone for a while in catering. Ray Wyatt was the first person to sit next to me and make me feel like I mattered. He will never know how much his friendship in a very dark place meant to me. And he wished him a happy birthday. And Bray Wyatt not only liked it, but he retweeted it. You can imagine how one simple gesture can greatly affect someone's life in an instant. Now, I'm not saying I think we all have to freaking just automatically become like these advocates for peace and positivity because the reality is we're all human. We're all going to still make mistakes. We're all still going to get angry and get upset and say things we don't mean. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's human nature. I'm sorry to say it like that. But at the same time, one action, one small positive action to someone's bad day, to someone's horrible situation one good act of kindness can be the world and then some and I encourage everyone whether you're upset at somebody or you're or you're mad about something or you're having some kind of a bad day try to do something nice for someone or just do something small that that can change the outcome of something because you never know that one little action can be like a a, a pebble thrown into a, a, a pond like that one little pebble being thrown in will cause a, a ripple effect that can go so far and make things better for someone. And I know it's, it, it may sound like a lot to do for some of you, but I encourage you to try. Because honestly, the reason why we even do these episodes or we've been doing these this podcast it if it, yes it's it, it's something we love that we enjoy talking about and get excited upon but at the same time i'm sure you guys listen to us and you're thinking like man like i don't know if they if, if someone has an opinion about this i wish someone could say how i feel about something and maybe we're brightening up your day but just know to everyone who's been listening, to who just started listening or recommends us to somebody, just know that one, we care and we will do our best to be better and continue to stay better for you. Two, that We thank you for listening to us, for giving us a, 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 an hour or a half hour, or however long these episodes get trimmed down to. Thank you for hearing us out. Thank you for letting us just say how we feel. Because honestly, sometimes when we do this, we're just speaking from the heart. We're speaking as humans, as individuals, and we always want to encourage all of you to just Continue to be awesome. Continue to be good. Have a good day or, or whatever you want to do. But I'm just asking. I don't know if it's right to say like this. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> just try and be better. Try. I know that it's hard to change your ways or to, to, to be positive, especially, especially during a time where we're in a pandemic and we're stuck at home 
and we and we listen to almost everything, whether it's on TV, the internet, or YouTube, or whatever, you know. But just try. That's all I ask. It's just we'll try. I hope you guys try, and I hope all of you are are trying to be better. And I hope the best for all of you. I I really do. My final closing sentiments before I we sign off the episode, on the episode. You know, in today's world, money problems are constant. There are a lot of things that we now have to pay in regards to fees and financial obligations and whatnot. However, um, the act of being nice to someone, giving them a hug, encouraging them, telling them, hey, I support you. You can do this. It doesn't take one dime, one penny for you to be nice to someone. It's absolutely free. And all that it maybe takes is a little bit of time and energy. Um, But if it's someone that you care about, that shouldn't even be um, a, a concern. My final thought is... As you said, Kamish, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's a tough time right now. But I can guarantee we all have people in our contact list on our phones that we haven't reached out to in quite some time. I would encourage all our listeners, even you guys, reach out to someone who you haven't talked to in a while. Especially maybe if the last time you spoke to this person, they said, yeah, I'm kind of in some... uh, I'm going through a struggle right now. Check up on the person. Ask them how they're doing. Um, A simple hi, how are you could turn into a two, three hour conversation. It could be life changing. I've always said that your next conversation with someone could be life changing because you never know. And to everybody out there who might be going through what Kimura uh, went through, there is resources. There's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which I don't have uh, right now on me, but if you just Google it, literally the phone number will pop up. If you happen to be a a wrestling fan and uh, you like to engage in uh, therapeutic videos or uh, philosophical videos, I would say that give Lillian Garcia's podcast a listen. Many people, like I said, let their guard down and, you know, encourage people out there who might be going through a similar experience of what to do. I even personally have a a small little podcast that I do on YouTube. It's called the Anything But Everything podcast. Nothing in that show is fake or scripted or fabricated. Everybody that's on that show is speaking from the heart and is speaking about experiences that really have happened and how they have dealt with it. So if you're going through a, a struggle uh, much like uh, the one that Kimura went through or any other struggle for that matter, reach out because there is somebody out there for everybody. It's just the case of reaching out and it does get better. No matter what the obstacle is, it does get better. So with all that said, and uh, I do appreciate your guys' honesty and um, patience during this episode, I know it's a very touchy subject, but I'm glad that we were able to just shoot from the hip and be authentic. Um, I thank all our listeners who have joined us in the past and continue to join us on each and every one of these episodes. Hopefully, we've been able to distract you from your troubles, even if it's been for five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, an hour and a half. I know that we always have a good time doing these. And... Uh, to uh, Shad Gaspar's family, to Kimora's family, on behalf of us and every and the entire wrestling community, um, those at least with good intentions, we send our thoughts and prayers and our condolences, and we hope that we can provide you enough support to get through such a tragic time for uh, each respective family. So. With all that said, once again, guys, thank you so much for joining us on another edition, and we'll catch you guys next time 
on AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Stay safe and stay well, everyone.